All right, hey everybody, welcome to episode 19 of Stop and Give Me 20 podcast, 20 minutes with some of the world's top fitness professionals. I'm your host, Anthony Rana. You can check out the show notes at stop20podcast.com. That's stop 20 podcast.com. Before you do that, go to iTunes and subscribe to the show. Please, please, please leave us a rating and a review. The reviews are also super important. I know I say it every time, but um, we still are a new show. We've only been doing this for a little over two months, but uh, really need the ratings and reviews, so please go on there and do that. All right, for today's episode, I have on Rachel Cosgrove, and Rachel is the best-selling author of The Female Body Breakthrough, as well as Drop two sizes. She's the owner, or I should say co-owner, of uh, Results Fitness and Results Fitness University, where she's helping change the way fitness is done. Rachel's a rare bird. She has the chops to train others at a very high level. Um, She trains herself at a very high level. She actually enters all kinds of road races and obstacle course races. She actually has one coming up. Uh, Powerlifting events. Um, But she also at the same time, and we don't see this in a lot of trainers, she has a brilliant business sense. And that's where Results Fitness University comes in. Um, I'm not using that description lightly. She, you know, go to one of the business uh, masterminds or mentorships that they have and, and which one's coming up and you'll see what I'm talking about. So Rachel, thanks so much for coming on. Thank you for having me. Quite an introduction. Thank you. (laughs) All right. Um, (laughs) Rach, let's uh, let's get right into this. What's your story? What's that? What's that spark that got you kind of into a fitness lifestyle? What's that spark? I love that question. What's that spark? Because it makes me think. You know, okay, what's the the moment that I really decided this was going to be my path? And who knew that this you know was going to lead to what it's led to? Um, which is what's so cool. Because thinking back, uh, how I got started, really it was through you know kind of. Uh, shallow reasons, you know, shallow, selfish reasons. It was really, uh, you know, I was in dance. I loved dancing. I was, you know, very serious about my dance career. So serious that I moved to New York City to pursue dancing. I mean, it was, you know, something I was serious about, but I never had the dancer's body. I, you know, have short legs and a long torso. And so I'd stand next to, you know, the other dancers in the lineup, but I'd compare myself, of course, as us women do. And, you know, look at how my legs kind of stopped <laughs> and they just kept going. And, uh, you know, so I was always on this pursuit of, uh, you know, this dancer's body. And it didn't help that I, you know, I do come from a family who does struggle with their weight. They, you know, my entire family struggles with obesity. And I've watched, you know, my, my family all struggle with different diets and, you know, trying to figure out different things. And so early, you know, I really, um, you know, was started trying to figure it out for myself. And so through, you know, this journey of, you know, not only, you know, within the dance studio, but. Um, then, you know, it, probably about the age of 12 or 13, my dad, who actually was very involved in fitness and, uh, went to the gym a lot and he was kind of an old school, um, he actually did uh, strongman competitions and he took me to the gym. He was the first one to take me to the gym. And so I, you know, started going to the gym and of course I was scared I would bulk up. So I would do lightweights with lots of reps and, you know, I'd have this little arm circuit I would do with like little three pound dumbbells. And then I'd spend most of my time on the treadmill and, you know, I, I never really, um, felt like I was seeing the results that I wanted to see. And so I continued on my pursuit. I went to college and got my degree in physiology. And I really always had a fascination with the human body. I just, I have always thought that, you know, uh, the inner workings of the human body, it's never in college. I, um, was, I had the opportunity to dissect cadavers and, uh, you know, that's always been something that's just fascinated me. And so, you know, as I started to learn more and more and then, um, you know, went to New York city and met my husband, Alan Cosgrove, and he's the one who really shifted my, uh, you know, my mindset and my philosophy of how I approached my own fitness, you know, and started to strength train more and started to see my body really start to change. And and that's really how I started. It's really, you know, it's funny because it started from this really wanting to look a certain way, really trying to get that perfect body, you know? And uh, now fitness is so much more to me. And it's, um, you know, it's, it's definitely, you know, led me on this path that's been an exciting, fun adventure. Yeah, that's, um, it's, in- I mean, it's almost universal that it, people got into it for kind of aesthetic reasons or rare reasons. Um, uh, but um, what, 
When you were going to the gym with your dad, really quick, what, like, he didn't say, Rach, let's go pick up these heavy things, or he didn't give you a program. He just said, you know, all right, cool, you're coming with me, just go do something. Yeah, we would go, and, uh, you know, he'd usually do the, you know, the bench press or the, the manly exercises, and <laughs> and I would, um, you know, I, you know, I would, and I'd read, you know, fitness magazines and stuff and try to figure, and I was, you know, watching you know, different, uh, Susan powder and, <laughs> you know, yeah. uh, I would, all those crazy, you know, people don't even know who she is. I was her for Halloween just recently. And all of my trainers were like, who are you? I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> you guys don't know, but you know, I used to, you know, I used to read and I started to, you know, try and figure stuff out then. Um, you know, but yeah, he, you know, he, he showed me a few things and, um, you know, you just start to try to explore and figure it out. And I, I mean, I'll be honest, most of what I did was on the, the cardio machines, you know, and then I would take, start taking aerobics classes. And then, you know, I started as an aerobics instructor. I started, um, teaching step and spin and all of those things. And, you know, then as I, you know, got into personal training, it wasn't really until, um, I'm after college when I moved to New York and I really, that's when I first became a personal trainer and started strength training and started, you know, teaching people how to strength train. And, um, and it's funny, I've recently been thinking about, cause when we opened our gym, I was 25 and so, um, we've had our gym open 17 years. And so even since we've opened our gym, cause after New York, we obviously moved back to California and opened our gym. And as a 25 year old trainer to my 40 something year old clients, uh, you know, they all would say, wait till you're my age, you know, and they'd always tell me that. And I'd say, Oh yeah, yeah. You know? And so a lot of those clients are still our clients. So now, you know, it's been 17 years and now here I am in my forties. And so it's funny because, you know, they're all now approaching their 60s, they're in their 50s, you know, and um, and so I've kind of gone on that journey. Like if, if I could, you know, as a 40, 25 year old trainer, you know, I had so things were so different. And my perspective was so different, you know, having that six pack and making sure I got my photo shoot done was important, you know, and um, now you know, in my forties, I'm so much more, I get my clients so much more, you yeah. know, I get them. I'm like, I am you, <laughs> yeah. I understand you. Totally. It's pretty rare. Uh, Rach, who was that superhero growing up? Who influenced you? Superhero. Well, if I'm not allowed to use family, uh, my dad always looked like Clark, Clark Kent was always uh, Superman to me and all my friends. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, if I, you know, if I was going to say someone who's a family, I'd be my dad would be Superman. Um, uh, but if I'm not going to say family, I mean, I would say, you know, I thinking on a bigger level of, um, just with business and with, um, even just the way they approach life, um, as you know, and as so many people know, cause I tell so many stories about him, uh, Richard Branson is somebody who I look up to. I look up to, uh, the way he runs his business. I look up the way he, you know, he lives his life, the way he gives, um, gives back. Uh, you know, he's, um, really makes an impact in such a bigger way, but then even on another level, just the way he treats people. And we've been fortunate to be able to, um, you know, spend some time at, uh, Necker Island with him and to see, you know, that he's just such a, um, such, you know, uh, just a good guy, you know, and really the way he treats his employees, the way he treats even his guests, you know, us. Um, you know, he's just, um, somebody who I think, you know, I always, um, inspires me. I always, when I'm trying to, you know, when I'm thinking about how I want to act in a certain situation or I want to make a decision, I, you know, I always kind of run the scenario of, you know, well, what would Richard Branson do? And so, um, I'd probably put him in that, that superhero place. Love it. And it's so great when you can, you know, we, we, a lot of times with us, like he's a celebrity, especially he's not just a business owner. I mean, he's a, he's a celebrity business owner because we all know about him and he's been in the news so much. But when you meet that superhero and they're nicer and cooler than you even expected, which is very cool. Yeah. And he is, he's so down to earth and, um, yeah, he's not better. You know, there's no, nothing about him that is better than anybody. I mean, when we were at, we were staying at his Island and, um, the first time we met him there, he, um, met, we were all going to go do some water sports. So it was, you know, it was like the water sports time. We're all going to go like paddleboarding and sailing. And so we all show up to do this water sports. We didn't know he was coming. And so he walks in and I'm like, you know, <laughs> I'm, you know, Oh my gosh, it's Richard Branson. And he's, we're, I'm like we're standing next to him and we're putting on sunscreen, you know, and he's like, hi, uh, you know, it's Sir Richard Branson, you know, and he's like, hi, I'm, I'm Richard. I'm like, yeah, I know who you are. <laughs> and he's like, what are you doing? You can paddleboard. I'm like, I don't know. What are you doing? You know? And it's like, you just, he was acting like we were just 
you know, the same all going, you know, and I'm like, you, you own this island. <laughs> but <laughs> beyond that, you know, he's just what he's accomplished. And I've read all of his business books and, um, you know, I just really, when you, anybody like that who has gone from, you know, really building from nothing to building everything, you know, that, that he's built and, um, and having the impact that he's had and just, you know, the way he's, the way he, um, you know, he's really looking for ways to give back, you know, and he's yeah. um, always looking for um, how he can make a bit, you know, with his influence, what he can do to, to really, um, you know, make a, make a change on a bigger level. Yeah. And, you know, speaking of that, you guys are doing that as well for the industry. And I think with you especially, and I, I do say this to a lot of my guests because they have so many different ways they've kind of approached things and people that they're that they're speaking to. And I think especially with you, you have tr- regular trainers, you have business owners through Results Fitness University um, that you're, you're, you have your clients, you have your employees at the gym. Um, and you know, you have women who you've written for and you're trying to empower them. Who are you trying to really be a superhero to? Who are you trying to help with, with your message? Well, of course my niece and nephew and my goddaughter, but (laughs) besides them, um, you know, I'm going to be a superhero to them, but, uh, but besides them, as far as in the industry, um, definitely, you know, I think it, it, it starts with our gym. I mean, Al and I are having a blast at the gym right now. And, you know, we've been having the gym 17 years. It has its ups and downs. And I would say right now we're both having a great time. You know, it's just, we have a great team and we just love being there and we love being around our team and bringing them up. And I think, you know, that's number one. We know if we push them to get better, that our company is going to get better. And so, you know, it's, we set the pace for our company. And so, um, you know, the, the faster we can grow and the faster they can grow and if we can help them to grow, then, uh, you know, we're going to be able to make a bigger impact on this industry. So they're, you know, they're number one because that's a direct, I see them every single day. And so, um, you know, I'm very aware of that, but then obviously, you know, through our results fitness university, um, you know, we've realized that, uh, you know, there's there, all of the trainers that we've been so fortunate to work with. And, um, you know, we're excited to continue that and to see people in the industry who have been able to, you know, who who started where we started and who are now, you know, really making an impact on an even bigger level. And so, um, you know, that's, you know, it's, like you said, it's, I do have a, a number of different voices and uh, sometimes like on Facebook, I'm like, who am I talking to? Because, because <laughs> it's, you know, you have your clients who yeah. of course you want to be superheroes to your clients and to your, you know, to our team who, you know, are very, you know, we want to drive them and then all of the fitness professionals and changing the way fitness is done. And really, you know, we want, we're not done, you know, we're, we have a lot, I think we've come a long way um, definitely since we started in this industry, the industry's dramatically changed, um, but we're not done, you know, and I think um, we, it, you know, I, my goal is not to be a, it's, you know, it's not to be a superhero. Like I think, you know, um, Alan, and I have always felt kind of weird about that, you know, the, the celebrity, you know, thing. Um, but we realized that that's um, part of it to, to accomplish what we want to accomplish is to, you know, people are going to know of you and know who you are. And, um, if we can, you know, help enough people to build a business and help, change more lives and really change the way fitness is done and change the way our profession is seen so that we're seen as, you know, professionals and part of our, the healthcare, you know, team. Um, I think that's, you know, that's really what it's about. Absolutely. And you, you know, you talk about the industry change. It's, it's interesting because I always use Alan's quote of been there, done that, still doing it. And, you know, that's why I always recommend, your mentorship or your mastermind to other trainers because I'm, I, I say it's they're still checking in and working at you know at Results Fitness, which helps them understand and helps them teach trainers about uh, about business about the fitness business because things change and you guys have to evolve with it. Give us just a minute on uh, on on the future of the industry. Where are things going? What's changing now? What do you think is where are we going? Yeah, I, I, like you said, I don't know how people could teach business without having, you know, that we call it our research and development because things are changing so quickly. And I think, uh, you know, by having it is our inspiration. It is our um, it is where we do our, you know, we can try stuff out and we can see if it works. And I mean, everything's changing everything from, you know, I mean, yes, in the fitness industry, as far as, you know, 
our program design and exercises and, you know, things like DBRT coming into the mix. And, you know, there's tons of, there's always something new, you know, as far as how can we get better results? How can we, um, you know, design even better programs so that our clients get faster results? You know, that's, that, that's always happening. But then besides that, um, with business, you know, even with just how we talk to our clients, I mean, even, um, or even your team, you know, um, we have most of our team are millennials, you know, so they're, it's a whole another group of people that are, you know, we got to figure out how do we communicate and how to, you know, um, and even now, like people are texting, people are, so I think technology obviously, uh, is a huge part of, um, the changes that are going to take place. And then I, you know, I do think how we communicate, I think, um, you know, the boundaries are definitely different. Uh, when Al and I first opened 17 years ago, we didn't have to, we, there was no thing, such thing as Facebook. So that wasn't even like a conversation about, you know, what is our Facebook, you know, our, our stance on Facebook going to be. But now, you know, it's something that you have to think about in your company and like how, you know, what's our presence going to be on Facebook? What, you know, what, are, what do we want to tell our team? How do they represent themselves? Um, and, you know, so I think it's, a, it's technology, like where the industry is going, but then it's also um, through that technology, how are we communicating with our clients to get better results? You know, so it's not just technology for technology's sake, but it's how does it actually make the experience better? Um, I think we're always going to, people are always going to need that in-person connection and I think they're going to need it more and more. Um, so I don't, you know, if, if you're a great coach, I don't think you're in danger of being replaced by a robot. You know, I don't think that's going to happen. Um, Cause I do think that, that there will still always be that need of, you know, if you're a great coach and if you're, you're not just a rep counter, you know, you're actually somebody who's um, you know, really you're, you're, you know, you have that connection with, with the people you work with to bring out the best in them. That's always going to be needed, you Absolutely. know? Um, so it's just figuring out how can we use technology to make that experience even better and we've integrated some stuff, you know, like heart rate monitor system, you know, um, even just like, you know, in body instead of, you know, pinching people with a caliper, you know, now yeah. they can step on an in body and we can get a nice print out of, you know, their, what their body's made up of. And so there's definitely already things that, um, you know, we started integrating in and now it's even looking at, you know, for us, we've always been very good about setting those professional boundaries because we felt that it's, um, very important. And so looking ahead, you know, what does that look like with, um, you know, I mean, we're even looking at, okay, how can we get, how can we get where people could text us at the gym and, you know, like getting an iPhone for the gym so that, um, we can text our clients because that's how people communicate now, you know, and we have a landline, we don't have a cell phone at the gym. So, um, things like that that are, you know, like I said, with communication, um, how can you make the experience even better using technology? And I think it's mostly through the communication that we have with our, with our clients. Yeah. It's, it's a, it's a, you can't beat them, join them type of thing. And, yeah. you know, even five years ago, we wouldn't have been saying this, but, um, definitely where there's a, an opportunity, but there's still some dangers there. So definitely right. very, very true. All right, Rach, now it's time for the stop and give me five segment, five rapid fire questions and answers. Uh, ready to go? I'm ready. All right. You're on a, <laughs> you're on a desert island. Perform better is flying somebody in for the uh, for a lecture. They're not going to bring you home, but they're going to just drop that person off. It could be anyone living. Who do you want to see? Who do you want to see lecture? So thinking about this, I'll just rapid fire and just sit fast, right? Um, it would be Tony Robbins. I have never got to see him speak live. And so I've actually gotten to see a lot of people who, you know, amazing speakers. And so he's, he's who I want to see. I've, I've listened to his cassette tapes. Nice. <laughs> That's how long I've been listening to him. Um, and, uh, you know, I've, you know, he's definitely influenced me. So I'd love to see him and his energy live. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, I'm surprised you haven't. Cool. All right. I know. You're starting a new company tomorrow, and you and Alan have to hire a new CEO. Money's no object. You can take anyone. I think I'm going to know the answer now, but you can take <laughs> anyone from another company. Who is it? Richard Branson. Okay. Uh, okay. And the main reason is the way he treats people. You know, I know he, he's, that's the main reason. And, yeah. And obviously he knows what he's doing. Love it. Uh, <laughs> Proudest personal fitness accomplishment. I know you do so many different things. You've tried out everything. What's your proudest personal fitness accomplishment? Proudest personal fitness accomplishment. Uh, I, I'd have to be the Iron, accomplishing the Ironman, um, which I when you when you sign up for an Ironman, you have to sign up a year in advance, 
And so in a, a, for a year, I designed a program and I stuck to that day by day and I did everything on my plan and I was so ready for that event a year later <laughs> and uh, I was, you know, it was a big undertaking. So an Ironman, you have, you swim uh, two miles, you bike 112 miles and then you run a marathon. And so, um, you know, you have to put the training in, you can't just show up and do it. Yeah, yeah. So that, that was definitely, I would say my, you know, the best feeling was accomplishing that Ironman because I spent a year training for it. Nice. Coolest uh, fitness experience really where you've kind of worked on. Yeah, this is, uh, I had a client who contacted me who lived on St. Thomas in the Virgin Islands. And she hired me to come out. So she'd fly me out and I'd stay there for a week and I'd train her and her husband. And she was like, you know, first I didn't know if she was going to be like a total nightmare. <laughs> so I charged enough money that, yeah. you know, it was exciting. It was going to be fun anyway. And uh, yet she was like so cool. And um, so I basically, you know, you can't train somebody for more than an hour a day. Right. Yeah. So I would do the workout and then I would hang out in St. Thomas. And so for the week and, you know, we do a workout once a day, you know, even like, so she ended up, she ended, brought me out like three or four times. She ended up, you know, I ended up training her for a figure competition. But anyway, it was funny because, um, it, that was, that was one of the coolest experiences I've ever had, um, was, you know, flying out and working in a place like that. Nice. Can't beat that. <laughs> um, you could have lunch with anyone living or dead. Who would it be? This would be Jim Rohn. Uh, Jim Rohn was, I took his, uh, 12, his, uh, 12 month, uh, personal development course, and it changed my life. And he's just had a huge, I've listened to him all the time and he's been, had a huge influence on me, but I never did go to one of his events or see him speak live. And so I'd love to meet Jim Rohn. Nice. Great. Um, all right, let's wrap it up last minute here. What's a project you're working on that's getting you really excited? A project I'm working on. I am, um, I just started a Facebook group, private Facebook group for women and women fitness entrepreneurs. And I'm loving it. I'm loving, you know, um, having, one, like you were talking about earlier, knowing specifically who I'm talking to. So now I can share stuff with these women that um, can help specifically them, you know, so we have some conversations going on in that Facebook group that I haven't been able to have outside of that group, um, you know, just really with the women in our industry to bring them up. So I'm excited about that. Cool. Uh, and uh, let's finish up with the letter to your younger self. What advice would you kind of give yourself? Letter to my younger self would be, uh, you know, like we talked about how I started in the fitness industry and, you know, the reason was really to have that perfect body. And, um, you know, I think I always was worried about what other people thought the young, my younger self. And I think I would just, um, want to tell myself, don't worry about, you know, that, um, that it doesn't matter and that to relax and to not stress so much and that life is an adventure and, uh, just to really enjoy myself more. I think, you know, then it's the things that you end up getting yourself stressed out about. Now, looking back, you know, you go, you know, what was I thinking? And so I would really just want to tell myself to, um, to relax and, you know, and enjoy myself more and, um, not be so, not, not be so worried about what other people think. Yeah. Honestly. Very common. And you know, it's uh, funny. It's, I think it's where the uh, saying you, the youth is wasted on the young. So yeah, uh, Rachel, um, <laughs> Thanks so much for coming on today. You have inspired so many people on so many different levels, whether it's women trainers or women fitness entrepreneurs or every male fitness entrepreneurs um, through what you've been doing. You guys really uh, are changing the way fitness is done. So thanks so much for coming on today. Thank you for having me. I'm excited. I'm excited to be here. So thanks. All right, well, that's going to do it for episode 19 of the Stop and Give Me 20 podcast. Thanks again to Rachel Cosgrove. Make sure to check out all the links to all her stuff at stop20podcast.com. Don't forget to subscribe to the show. Leave us a review and a rating. It's really going to help us out. My name is Anthony Rana. Thanks so much for stopping by.